Hi, we are going to be dividing decimal dividends by two digit divisors today. Um, we're going to reason about the placement of the decimal point and we're going to make connections to a written method with some long division. Um, so before we get started, I want to remind you of how we set up division when we do it. Um, when you're doing division, you have a whole thing you're going to break apart, whether it's pizza, um, marble is money, whatever. And you're going to, that's going to be your dividend. You're going to divide it with the divisor and the divisor is how many groups you're dividing it into. The quotient's the answer you're going to get. So if you look right here, you're going to take the first number. That's going to be your dividend. Your second would be your divisor and your last would be the quotient. Um, when you set it up with the division bar, we have dividend underneath, divisor to the left, quotient right on top. So looking at seven divided by 28, I know that seven is the dividend, 28 is the divisor. And that seems a little funny for me because seven is smaller than 28, but sometimes you have to take something smaller and break it into many pieces. So to set it up, seven would go right here 28 will go right outside. And now I'm gonna skip count by 28. Um, and I'm gonna do that just so it makes it a little bit easier for me while I'm going through the division process. Um, so you're gonna start with 28, 56, 84, 112, 140, 168, 196, 224, and 252. All right, and we only have to skip count nine times. So, um, because our largest single digit in the quotient bar would be nine, we can't go any higher. Um, does 28 go into seven? It does not, but we need to know what seven is divided into 28 groups. So to be more precise, we're gonna add a decimal and a zero. First things first, put that decimal straight up. And we're gonna say, does 28 go into a 70? And yes, it does. Looking at my skip counting, I know three times would be too many, so I'm gonna put two. Two times 28 would give me 56. 70 minus 56, the seven would change to a six. 10 minus six is four. Six minus five is one. You can't do a remainder of 14 when you've already started your decimal division. So I'm going to add a zero and bring that down. And now I'm going to say, does 28 go into 140? Because I did my skip count right away. I'm like, whoop, whoop. Because I know um, 28 goes into 140 five times. Five times 28 is 140. And now I'm at my favorite part of long division. Look at the bottom. You see a nice little zero. So that tells me I'm done. Um, now I'm going to check my work. Um, today I'm going to use an area model. You don't need to. I'm just choosing to. Um, using the distributive property, I'm going to do 20 and 8 and 2 tenths and 5 hundredths. All right. So 20 times 2 tenths would be 40 tenths, which would equal 4. 8 times 2 tenths would be 16 tenths which would be one and six tenths. 20 times five hundredths would be 100 one hundredths. So that would equal one. And then eight times five hundredths would be 40 hundredths or four tenths. Now I'm going to add them together. Four, whoops, one and six tenths one, and then four tenths. And I can add decimals and zeros to the numbers without the decimals. Um, zero plus six plus zero plus four is zero. Or 10, I'm sorry, put down the zero, carry the one. And one plus four plus one plus one is seven. So our work checks out, we did great. Hope this helped.